many people who had uh, some sort of awakening to consciousness or sp spirituality want to work on it and basically spend like, their life on it. They don't want to do a regular job anymore. So in the community I have around this newsletter and these videos and podcasts, uh, we have been discussing about business and spirituality or spiritual and conscious businesses. So I'm writing and talking about this today and also inviting you to a Zoom call. So let's let's talk at the two, let's define the two different topics first. Consciousness and spiritual are not the same. So consciousness is a state of being aware and of responding to the surroundings. A person aware of something and especially of yourself, especially being aware of oneself. That's consciousness. A conscious business, therefore, is a business that would be conscious of what is it's doing, especially if it's doing bad or if it's doing good. Spiritual is the quality of being concerned with the human spirit or the soul as opposed to material or physical things. So it's different. An example of a spiritual business would be, are you making money by helping people or are you more concerned by their spirit than their body? So yeah, these, these are two different things, even though there is overlap, of course, spiritual businesses are mostly, are, most of them are concerned with consciousness and conscious businesses talk a lot about spirituality or, or sometimes do. If you look at a spiritual leader like uh, Sadhguru <laughs> that I've been following quite a bit, there is a whole business around him. Uh, he buys ads, his team buy ads on, uh, on, on Google and sells retreats and so on. So that's what I want to talk about today. I think first, there is nothing wrong in making money. If it helps people, if it helps the planet, because money is energy, right? Some people think uh, spiritual should never be a business. Well, it is. Just look at the churches that I have omitted entirely <laughs> from this topic here. I'm, I'm looking at other, other forms of businesses. But people need to have a roof, buy gloves. Um, they need to generate some revenue unless they live in a monastery or alone in the forest, which I'll save for another video. But if you are in this world, you need to make some form of revenue. So there is nothing wrong. I think it's totally okay to make money, have a job that is conscious or related to spirituality. That's my opinion. I know some of uh, some people are against that. That's okay. I just wanted to say my own. The limits, of course, are the integrity of that conscious or spiritual business. There are many businesses that are uh, damaging people, like uh, the story of John of God that I wrote about, talked about, you know, this uh, uh, Brazilian shaman that was jailed, uh, even though he had thousands of people coming to him uh, daily, and he, um, he, he was abusing people. So he's in jail now. Of course, that's total lack of integrity. Um, another one, you know, Amazon.com just launched a conscious category. I link into it into my newsletter. But at the same time, they probably contribute one of the top businesses that contributes to pollution by shipping container ships from China full of stuff that we're buying that we mostly don't need, right? So how, how does the organic or conscious category in Amazon contribute to the 99% of it, which doesn't do so good for the planet. That's, of course, something we need to look at, think about. Then there is for-profit and non-profit. I think both are great. I just um, spent years with Laila Jana, who left us and had two non-profit businesses that she turned into a for-profit. It's called Sama. It was called Sama Source, now it's called Sama. And I, I learned from her that it was really difficult to always depend on donations, on basically scaled charity, which are donations for for profits. Even though I respect for profits a lot, I believe that to provide more jobs like she was doing to Africa, it's better, and that was her conclusion, to actually run a business and be conscious in what you do, the way you treat your employees, the way you treat your clients, the way you treat uh, what you do with uh, the money, of course. Um, so just wanted to say that. 
I think also we time is now for changing our habits. The consciousness revolution, of course, is not new. It started many years ago. But what's new is the... I'm conscious about the cigalas coming down. I don't know, because I talk too loud. <laughs> but uh, I love them. I don't know if you can hear them. But the uh, tremendous change that needs to happen is now, is consciousness. We need to be more aware of the huge depression that is going on, the silent killer, right? So change your mind, meditation. I talk about this every day. Um, and uh, and also what we do to the planet. So I think for our own survival as a species, we need to a species we need to change now. And this is accelerating. It's not new either. But I'm really happy, and I see uh, that I see more and more conscious people and more and more conscious businesses. And I think it's a good thing. We're doing a Zoom call next Tuesday, uh, August 16th at 6 p.m. If you're not on the beach, uh, that's Paris time, C-E-S-T. If you want to, to come to that, you're welcome. You will meet great people in the community. And we're going to talk about that because many people actually consider making it their jobs. I feel myself like it's kind of the beginning of the Internet. When it started, it was 1993, 1994 for me. Nothing was very structured. It's not very structured. It's kind of a mess. Difficult if you want to go to a meditation retreat. Which ones are good? Which ones are bad? Uh, what's the price? Why should you pay this or that? Same with ceremonies. Even worse with indigenous. It's great. But you can also go to the wrong places. Or you could do ceremonies with wrong people. Or you could uh, read a book that is useless. So it seems to me that there is a lot to be done around it. And it's a great opportunity to build things that are conscious and that help people. So I took a few notes in preparation for this, uh, for this call, uh, which, uh, which, which are just thoughts. So please add yours to the comments and come to the call if you want to, to discuss it. But basically, I looked at single-person businesses. So there are teachers, there are coaches, there are public speakers. Some of them have built entire businesses around themselves, like Josie Spenza did. Uh, I think it's $5,000. I mean, it's different prices, but like a lot of money to go to some of these retreats. Nothing wrong with that. Again, I look at spiritual leaders like Sadhguru I talked about. You have uh, teachers of body practices, practices such as yoga or Kundalini yoga. Uh, there is a great yogi called Amandeep Singh who will take you to uh, retreats in, uh, in, uh, around India or in India or Pakistan, uh, to do to practice Kundalini. I'd like to do that myself. I've uh, worked with him a few times. There are offers, again, single-person businesses, uh, such as my friend Daniel Pitchbeck or, or uh, Michael Pollan. I'm quoting Daniel because he has a newsletter that is a paid now newsletter, and he's making some reasonable money with it. I'm so happy for him. This is a great way to, you know, depend on... No boss. You're the only boss if you write a newsletter. Michael Pollan that uh, wrote some books, How to Change Your Mind, now Netflix series. Also awesome. Musicians, I'm quoting Delphina in there with a link. You could be a facilitator of a ceremony. There are more and more of us. It could be sound ceremonies, sound healings, or it could be a full-on uh, indigenous uh, or shamanic ceremonies. I am uh, also linking to a friend here quietly. Who does, uh, who does North Indian uh, ceremonies. Uh, you could be a filmmaker, a producer, a tarot reader, uh, an astrologist. You know, you might be laughing about tarot reading, but if you look at the work of Alejandro F uh, Jodorowsky, also a movie maker, watch his movies, he's followed by 5 million people on Facebook. Healings, of course, won't talk about this much here, but there are some people doing what they call energy healings or other types of healings. A massage therapist is a healer. Some of them don't say it. They are just doing massages, but they're doing much more, in my opinion, at least. Then there are whole businesses and non-profit organizations, so organizations. So I looked at that a little bit and took a few examples. Uh, online teaching classes sounds true. It's very good. I took a class of uh, Eckhart Tolle there and uh, liked it. There is Gaia, there is Mind Valley that I have not tried myself. Um, there are retreat centers, which range from free, dhamma.org, which is the Vipassana organization, uh, all the way up to Spirit Rock or Pachamama. Um, Uni retreats, if you want to try uh, the medicines of the Amazon forest uh, in a fully legal environment in Rio. 
uh, they're amazing, they're really good. There are also private tours. They range from not much to thousands of dollars. Sometimes for private tours, it's tens of thousands for a group. And, uh, you know, my opinion here is that it's the same. If there are wealthy people who will only try those consciousness or mind experiences because they can only do it in a, in a luxury uh, environment, that's fine, because they wouldn't do it otherwise. So I think it's better if they do it this way than they don't do it. And generally, the indigenous benefit from it. Uh, of course, they can build houses, they can uh, buy food and clothes for their people. So this is all great, as long as it doesn't turn into some, something negative and we don't turn the indigenous into some kind of uh, amusement park. Uh, like I, I've been, uh, I've done a safari in Africa and you can feel that some villages have been, you know, destroyed and now it's just here for the tourists or they lose their land so there's a lot of positives and negatives and we need to be aware of the negatives as well but the ones i've seen in the amazon forest are are doing great and it helps them and, and i know what they do with uh, the money it's all about being conscious about how you use the money as well there are conscious products i really like the ocean cleanup project which are blue glasses you can buy from pl uh, recycled from plastic that has been taken out of the oceans constantly and then recycled into glasses. So buy those glasses. They're amazing. It really helps. The founder is young. It's incredible. Conscious Shops Thrive Market is one that was acquired. And even Amazon, as I was saying, Amazon.com has now a conscious space. It's very small. I wish it would be everywhere. There are e-commerce uh, shops selling uh, indigenous you know, medicine, sometimes rapé and... Uh, uh, objects, I don't know, t-shirts and spiritual objects. Like just looking at it, they're very small. I'm trying to make a list here. I'm not saying if it's good or bad. You make your own judgment. Um, and of course, many non-profit organizations that can become huge sometimes. I'm thinking about Amazon Watch, do good, good job in the Amazon forest. Um, it, we could add any label for company products that either do good for the planet or good for the people. But as you know, if you watch a cowspiracy or seaspiracy, you know that those la labels are misleading, sometimes made by the industries themselves just to sell more or tell you, for example, for uh, uh, dairy products that they're good or you will find very few, very little information on why alcohol is bad for you, for example, just because it's such a big business. So this is a very difficult topic. Here, we're looking more at what one person can do or a few people can do. Because so many people want to help others or are already helping others and don't really know what, what to do. So that's what we are looking at. Um, they, the topics range from coaching therapy, navigating life, motivational work, all the way to Tony Robbins, <laughs> right? I don't know. Uh, meditation, dreams work, uh, lucid dreaming, hypnosis, spiritual uh, uh, which spiritual path to take or which retreats to go to uh, uh, art of course very involved I can feel like I'm doing I'm talking a lot about a lot of different things it's just a brainstorming really um, the ancient wisdom shamanism healing tarot astrology and around those topics uh, which have yet to be you know defined in a better way at least for me uh, like there is no place where you can go and, and find all of that easily. It's all scattered. Like if you want good luck, if you want to try to find a retreat or some diaries here and there, like, I don't know. Very, it looks like everything needs to be done. Resources, same. Books to read, movies to read, music to hear, listen to, art, talks, podcasts, online videos. This is all available online, but you have to do a lot of work to find it. So... There is space there, actually, in helping people find the information. Um, so this is this is what I would like to talk about with this group, um, with uh, the community. And you're welcome to join. It's a Zoom call. All the details are on my uh, weekly newsletter. This one is my name at uh, my name dot substack dot com. Loic Lemer, L O I C L E M E U R at dot substack dot com. And uh, I'll put the link in the in the YouTube uh, here description of the video. If you want to join Tuesday, 6 p.m. Paris time, that's CEST. So that's 9 a.m. San Francisco and noon New York. So we're missing the Asian Asians, uh, but uh, the rest of the world can join if they want to. It's a small 
group of interesting people. So anyway, that was what I wanted to share today. There is nothing wrong to me about business and consciousness or making your own job, doing your own job. I think it's a fascinating topic and I will keep writing about it and making videos about it. Thank you for listening. Leave a comment with other ideas, things I missed. Again, let's not talk about the churches, gigantic business, but I think that's out of topic. Anyway, thank you for listening.